An overwhelming shadow descended upon Earth as the Vortak Empire's massive fleet arrived in orbit. The sky above major cities darkened as colossal warships blocked out the sun. The Vortak, an alien species that had already conquered countless worlds, had set their sights on Earth, a seemingly insignificant, primitive planet. For Commander Zar, the Vortak's top military strategist, this mission was a formality. Earth was just another resource-rich world, filled with lesser beings ripe for domination. His confidence stemmed from intelligence reports that depicted humans as weak, disorganized, and technologically inferior. Zar so watched from the command deck of his flagship, looking down at the blue planet with cold detachment. His previous campaigns had taught him that such species often surrendered after the first strike. They rarely fought back once they witnessed the might of the Vortak. This will be over before it starts, Zar muttered half to himself, his long fingers tapping rhythmically on the control console. His officers shared his sentiment. There was no reason to believe this invasion would be any different from the countless others. Without hesitation, Zar gave the order to commence the attack. The Vortak fleet unleashed a barrage of energy weapons, targeting Earth's major cities. The destruction was immediate and catastrophic. Buildings crumbled under the intense blasts, and panic spread among the human population. Zar smirked as he observed the chaos from afar, his arrogance fully intact. Victory was already within reach, or so he believed. The initial wave of attacks was devastating, leaving Earth's defenses in shambles. Global communication networks were disrupted, and the militaries of the world scrambled to respond to an invasion they were wholly unprepared for. The Vortex advanced shields and weaponry made them nearly untouchable. Every missile, every jet, every attempt to counter their assault was effortlessly neutralized by the alien forces. From Tsar's perspective, humanity's attempts to fight back were not only futile but pathetic. On the ground, however, the situation was far from hopeless. Humanity, while battered and outgunned, was not broken. Governments around the world quickly mobilized their forces, forming a united front in the face of the unprecedented threat. Soldiers, police forces, and civilians alike took up arms in defense of their homes. The sense of urgency was palpable, but so was the resolve. This was their planet, and they wouldn't go down without a fight. Despite their initial losses, human resistance began to stiffen. Tsar received reports of skirmishes from various regions, but he dismissed them as minor nuisances. Let them struggle, he said, dismissing the notion that humans could pose a real threat. The Vortak had faced resistance before, but it had never amounted to more than a delay in their inevitable victory. The Vortak ground forces began landing in several major cities, confident that they would quickly suppress any remaining human resistance. Their landing crafts, massive and heavily armed, deployed troops in large numbers. Streets were turned into war zones as alien soldiers marched through cities, enforcing their will upon the human population. Tsar watched the landing with the same calm detachment, still confident that the humans would crumble. However, reports started coming in that confused Tsar. It began with small disruptions in their operations, humans attacking Vortak soldiers with guerrilla tactics, unexpected ambushes, and strategic retreats that created confusion within the Vortak ranks. At first, Tsar dismissed them as insignificant, isolated incidents. But as the hours went by, more and more reports arrived of human resistance, not only holding strong but adapting to the invasion in ways the Vortak had not anticipated. It wasn't just professional military forces that were fighting back. Civilians were organizing resistance movements, using whatever weapons and resources they could find. In rural areas, farmers armed themselves with makeshift weapons and set up traps for Vortak patrols. In cities, engineers and technicians worked tirelessly to re-establish communication networks and develop new ways to counter the alien technology. The humans were proving to be far more resourceful than Tsar had expected. Tsar's confidence began to waver, if only slightly. How are they still fighting? He muttered, reviewing reports of several failed ground assaults. His officers, who had shared his arrogance, now looked to him for answers. They, too, had underestimated the humans, and now they were paying the price for their hubris. The more the Vortak tried to crush the humans, the more resilient they became. 
Tsar, for the first time, started to question whether the invasion would be as swift as he had predicted. The humans were proving to be unpredictable, their spirit unbroken despite the devastation they faced. What had begun as a simple conquest was starting to feel more like a drawn-out war. As Tsar stood on the command deck, looking down at Earth, a new report came in. It was unlike anything he had heard so far. In one of the rural regions, a Vortac ground patrol had been wiped out entirely by a group of human civilians. They had used crude explosives and traps, tactics the Vortac had not been prepared for. It wasn't the loss of a few soldiers that concerned Tsar. It was the fact that these humans, civilians no less, had managed to outsmart his troops. Tsar's mind raced as he considered the implications. This was not going according to plan. The humans were supposed to surrender, to kneel before the might of the Vortak Empire. And yet they fought back, with a determination that Tsar hadn't seen in any other species. He couldn't ignore it any longer. Earth would not fall as easily as he had thought. As the Vortak continued their assault, Tsar realized something he hadn't considered before. Humanity was different. They weren't just fighting to survive. They were fighting for something deeper, something the Vortak couldn't understand. The humans weren't fighting out of fear. They were fighting out of defiance, and Tsar was beginning to understand that this defiance would be far more difficult to crush than any physical resistance. For the first time, Tsar felt a twinge of uncertainty. This was not the easy victory he had expected, and as the battle dragged on, he couldn't shake the feeling that the humans had only just begun to fight back. The initial shock of the invasion had given way to something more enduring. Across the globe, Humanity was organizing itself, not through traditional military channels but through sheer willpower and necessity. Ordinary people, driven by a desire to protect their homes and families, began to resist in ways that the Vortak Empire could never have anticipated. What started as isolated pockets of defiance quickly spread into a global movement. Civilians armed themselves with anything they could find, old firearms, homemade explosives, even farming tools. It wasn't about matching the Vortac in technological might. It was about survival and adaptation. Captain Sarah Monroe, a seasoned soldier with years of experience in combat zones, found herself at the center of this rapidly evolving resistance. She had been leading a small unit of military personnel in the defense of a key city when the first wave of the invasion struck. But as military infrastructure crumbled under the weight of the Vortac's overwhelming firepower, it became clear that this fight would not be won through conventional means. Monroe, known for her grit and quick thinking, began rallying not only soldiers but civilians who were willing to fight. Under her command, men and women from all walks of life, mechanics, teachers, students, banded together to defend their city block by block. It was in the dense urban sprawl where Monroe's leadership truly shined. Her ability to inspire people in the face of overwhelming odds became the backbone of the resistance movement. She didn't have access to the advanced weapons of the Vortac, but she knew how to use Earth's terrain to her advantage. Every alleyway became a potential ambush site, every rooftop an observation post. Monroe's units set traps, disabled enemy drones, and launched hit-and-run attacks that left the Vortac scrambling. In one daring raid, her group managed to steal alien equipment, which they promptly used against the invaders. The Vortac, used to crushing resistance swiftly and with minimal effort, were caught off guard. They had believed their superior technology would guarantee a quick victory. But they had never faced opponents like this. The humans' willingness to fight, despite being outgunned and outmatched, began to erode the Vortac's confidence. Commander Zar, observing from orbit, could not understand how these primitive, humans were managing to disrupt his carefully laid plans. The humans were using tactics that no other conquered species had ever dared to employ. They were unpredictable, adapting their strategies with every skirmish. What was meant to be a clean, surgical conquest had turned into a chaotic battlefield. Tsar's doubts grew as more reports flooded in. The humans were fighting with an intensity and tenacity that defied logic. His ground commanders reported constant ambushes and sabotage. Entire patrols were going missing, and supply lines were being cut off. The Vortac troops, once so confident in their victory, began to feel the strain of an enemy that refused to break. Tsar, for the first time, 
felt a creeping sense of unease. His forces were superior in every measurable way, yet they were being outmaneuvered and outwitted at every turn. The humans were proving to be more than just a nuisance. They were becoming a serious threat. It wasn't just physical combat that wore down the Vortac. Humanity had also mastered the art of psychological warfare. Monroe and her resistance fighters began targeting Vortac communication networks, intercepting messages, and spreading misinformation. At night, they launched attacks on alien camps, leaving Vortac soldiers on edge, unable to sleep, unsure of when the next strike would come. Fear began to spread through the Vortac ranks. They had never encountered an enemy so willing to die for their cause, so determined to resist even in the face of certain death. The humans were relentless, and it was taking a toll on the invaders. Monroe's most significant victory came not from the battle she won, but from the morale she built among her fighters. Every time they managed to push back the Vortac, even if only for a few hours, it renewed their determination. Civilians who had once fled from the invading forces were now joining the fight. People who had never held a weapon in their lives were standing alongside seasoned soldiers, ready to defend their homes. This was not just a war for territory, it was a war for survival, for humanity's very existence. And Monroe made sure that every person under her command understood that. The losses were heavy, but the resolve was unshakable. Monroe herself had seen close friends fall in battle, but she never let it weaken her resolve. She knew that surrender was not an option. For every Vortex soldier they killed, three more seemed to take their place, but that didn't stop them. They kept fighting, kept adapting. Each skirmish taught them something new about their enemy, and they used that knowledge to strike even harder the next time. Tsar, increasingly frustrated, decided that enough was enough. He ordered his forces to regroup for a massive final assault, a move designed to crush the human spirit once and for all. His strategy was simple, overwhelm the humans with sheer force, show them the futility of their resistance, and break their will to fight. But Tsar was beginning to learn that humans were not like the other species the Vortac had conquered. There wasn't something that could be broken with a single overwhelming strike. The more the Vortac pushed, the more humanity pushed back. As the Vortac forces prepared for their final offensive, Monroe and her fighters made their own preparations. They knew the Vortac were planning something big, something that would test their resolve like never before. But Monroe had seen the determination in the eyes of her fighters. She had seen ordinary people rise to extraordinary heights in the face of unimaginable adversity. And she knew one thing for certain, whatever the Vortac threw at them, humanity would not back down. Commander Tsar's final attack was meant to be the death blow, the strike that would bring Earth to its knees. But even as his forces gathered, he couldn't shake the nagging feeling that the humans had something up their sleeves. They had survived this long against all odds, and Tsar was beginning to wonder if he had underestimated them from the start. For the first time, the Vortac Empire was facing an enemy that wouldn't submit, wouldn't surrender and Tsar was left to wonder if even their mightiest attack would be enough to break the spirit of humanity. The tide of war had shifted, and for the first time since the invasion began, humanity was no longer on the defensive. It started small, isolated victories against the Vortex supply lines, and the capture of several pieces of alien technology. Engineers, scientists, and hackers across the globe began working tirelessly, reverse-engineering the Vortex advanced weapons and shields. What was once incomprehensible alien technology soon became the foundation for humanity's counteroffensive. In underground bunkers and makeshift labs, humans combined their understanding of physics and engineering with the alien tech they'd acquired. The result was a hybrid of human and Vortex weaponry, not quite as sleek as the original designs but devastatingly effective. Captain Monroe and her team were the first to use these weapons in the field. They struck at the heart of the Vortex supply chains, crippling their ability to reinforce their troops. It was the first real blow that caused the Vortex to take notice. What had been sporadic resistance was turning into a calculated, organized campaign. The once unstoppable Vortex were suddenly vulnerable. Monroe's raids weren't just about destruction, they were about precision. She and her team targeted critical infrastructure, communication towers, fuel depots, and transport routes. 
Each successful mission not only disrupted the Vortex operations but also boosted human morale. Cities that had been overrun were now seeing signs of hope. Regions that had been under complete Vortex control were being reclaimed, one battle at a time. Monroe's fighters became legends in the resistance, their daring missions talked about in hushed tones across the globe. For Tsar, the situation had gone from frustrating to dire. What should have been an easy conquest was slipping through his fingers. The humans, who he had once considered weak, were now proving to be the most formidable foe the Vortac had ever faced. The resistance wasn't just a nuisance anymore. It was a full-blown threat to the Vortac's dominance. Tsar found himself facing pressure from his superiors in the Vortac High Command. They demanded results, quickly. But the more he tried to clamp down on human resistance, the more it seemed to spread. Tsar's attempts to rally his troops fell on deaf ears. His soldiers, once confident in their technological superiority, were now beginning to show signs of fatigue and doubt. The relentless guerrilla tactics of the humans were wearing them down. Patrols no longer ventured far from their bases, and fear had begun to creep into their ranks. Every step they took, every road they traveled could be a trap. Tsar knew that this war was no longer one of brute strength, but of strategy and endurance. And the humans were proving to have both in abundance. Humanity's strength lay not just in their weapons, but in their unity. Nations that had once been at odds with each other were now working together as a single, cohesive force. The Vortac had underestimated humanity's capacity to collaborate, to innovate under pressure. From the highest-ranking generals to the civilians fighting in the streets, there was a shared understanding that this wasn't just a war for survival. It was a war for the future of their species. Monroe's fighters had become a symbol of that unity, leading the charge against an enemy that had never faced such resistance. Innovation flourished in the face of adversity. What started as small, improvised victories turned into large-scale operations. Makeshift bases were set up in areas the Vortac had thought were impenetrable. Engineers and scientists found new ways to shield human forces from Vortac sensors. Hackers disrupted Vortac communications, creating confusion among the alien forces. Every action, every tactic was designed to weaken the Vortac's resolve and sap their confidence. Humanity had become more than just a nuisance. They were now a fully-fledged resistance force, capable of challenging one of the most advanced civilizations in the galaxy. Tsar, realizing that conventional tactics were no longer enough, decided to escalate the conflict. He ordered the deployment of weapons of mass destruction, designed to obliterate entire cities and bring the humans to their knees. He believed that crushing the human spirit was the only way to secure victory. The plan was simple. Destroy enough of Earth's infrastructure, and the humans would have no choice but to surrender. Tsar's desperation was evident in his decisions, but to him, there was no other way. He could not afford to fail. Yet, even as Tsar prepared his final strike, there was an undercurrent of uncertainty. The humans had already defied every expectation, and as much as he wanted to believe that these new weapons would turn the tide in his favor— he couldn't shake the feeling that it wouldn't be enough. The humans were relentless, their will to survive unbreakable. Tsar had underestimated them once, and now he was paying the price for that arrogance. Still, he pressed on, convinced that overwhelming force was the only way to end the conflict once and for all. Monroe and her team, always one step ahead, intercepted the plans for Tsar's final attack. In the chaos of the war, they had managed to gather enough intelligence to identify a critical flaw in the Vortex weaponry. The technology that powered their massive destruction devices was vulnerable. If hit at the right moment, it could backfire, causing catastrophic damage to the Vortex's own forces. It was a weakness the Vortex themselves hadn't realized. Monroe knew this was their chance. The Vortex were preparing for their ultimate strike, but humanity now had the key to turning that weapon against them. The stage was set for the final battle. Tsar, desperate to end the war, prepared to unleash the full might of the Vortac Empire on Earth. But Monroe and her fighters had other plans. They had the knowledge, the weapons, and most importantly, the resolve to fight back. As the Vortac forces gathered for their last push, humanity stood ready. It was no longer about mere survival. It was about victory. 
The final clash was imminent, and for the first time, Tsar found himself uncertain of the outcome. The Vortak had come to earth expecting an easy victory, but what they had found was a species that refused to bow, refused to surrender. And now, with the knowledge of the Vortak's weakness in their hands, humanity was prepared to show the invaders just how wrong they had been. The battle for earth was far from over, and the Vortak were about to learn the true cost of underestimating the spirit of humanity. The final assault began with a wave of destruction unlike anything humanity had seen. Tsar had unleashed the full might of the Vortak fleet, believing that overwhelming force would finally crush Earth's resistance. The sky above turned black as thousands of alien warships descended, unleashing torrents of firepower upon the planet. Cities that had stood defiant throughout the invasion were pounded by relentless barges. But humanity had been preparing for this moment. Captain Monroe and her team, armed with their hybrid technology and knowledge of the Vortak's critical weakness, were ready. As the Vortak forces pushed forward, Monroe's counteroffensive began. Her team struck with precision, targeting the heart of the Vortak's command structure. Using the information they had gathered, they exploited the weaknesses in the alien technology, disabling key systems and severing communication links between Vortak units. The once coordinated Vortak assault started to unravel. Alien soldiers found themselves cut off from their commanders, their sophisticated weaponry suddenly malfunctioning under human counterattacks. Monroe's team, equipped with the reverse engineered alien technology, pushed deeper into Vortak controlled areas, dismantling their operations piece by piece. What had once seemed like an invincible alien force was now crumbling under the weight of humanity's ingenuity and determination. The resistance fighters moved swiftly, striking with both human tenacity and alien precision. Monroe's leadership was key. Her tactical brilliance, combined with her intimate understanding of Earth's terrain, allowed her to outmaneuver the Vortak at every turn. The Vortak soldiers, once so confident in their superiority, began to falter. As their command structure crumbled, so did their morale. They were no longer facing a scattered, disorganized resistance. They were up against a unified force that refused to yield. The psychological warfare that had worn them down throughout the conflict now reached a breaking point. The human fighters, driven by the knowledge that this was their final stand, pressed harder than ever. For every human that fell, another took their place, fighting with a ferocity that the Vortak had never encountered in their conquests. Tsar, watching from his flagship, felt the tide turning against him. What should have been a final— decisive strike was rapidly becoming a disaster. The humans were pushing back harder than ever, their attacks striking at the very core of the Vortak war machine. Reports flooded in from his commanders. Units were being overrun, entire battalions wiped out by the human counteroffensive. Tsar had underestimated these humans, and now he was paying the price. Desperation set in as Tsar realized his forces were being systematically dismantled. His superior numbers and advanced technology were no longer enough. The humans had found a way to turn the Vortex's strengths against them. Tsar's mind raced as he searched for a way to salvage the situation, but it was too late. Monroe and her fighters had taken control of key Vortex installations, cutting off reinforcements and supplies. The alien army, once so mighty, was now in full retreat. The final blow came not in the form of a massive battle— but in a strategic checkmate. Monroe and her team, having crippled the Vortex command infrastructure, had effectively severed Tsar's control over his forces. His soldiers, leaderless and demoralized, began abandoning their posts. Tsar, realizing the full extent of his defeat, had no choice but to retreat. In his final moments on earth, he issued the order to withdraw, knowing that to continue the fight would only result in the complete annihilation of his forces. As Tsar's flagship began its retreat into orbit, Monroe stood victorious on the battlefield. She had led humanity's last stand and had come out on top. The Vortak, once so sure of their dominance, had been brought low by a species they had considered weak and primitive. Monroe's knowledge of Earth's terrain, combined with the ingenuity of her team, had outmatched Tsar's superior forces. It was a victory born not just of strategy, but of sheer willpower and determination humanity's triumph was absolute. Across the globe, 
people celebrated as the Vortak warships fled the planet. The alien invaders, who had believed Earth would be just another conquest, now understood that this world was different. Earth had fought back in ways they had never expected, and in doing so, had secured not only their survival but their place in the galaxy. The cost had been high, with cities destroyed and countless lives lost, but the spirit of humanity had never been broken. Tsar, humiliated and defeated, returned to his superiors with news of the failure. The Vortak Empire, known for its conquests, had been forced to retreat from a planet they had once considered insignificant. Tsar knew that Earth was not a world to be underestimated. The humans had proven themselves to be far more dangerous than any species the Vortak had ever encountered. As he reflected on the battle, he couldn't help but feel a deep respect for the humans. They were a force to be reckoned with, and the galaxy would never view them the same way again. Back on Earth, the victory celebrations were tempered by the heavy cost of the war. Cities lay in ruins, and the toll on the population was immense. But the war had brought humanity together in a way that few events could. The nations of the world, once divided by politics and borders, had united against a common enemy. The bonds forged in the fires of war would not be easily broken. Earth, once vulnerable and fractured, was now stronger and more united than ever before. As the Vortex ships disappeared into the vastness of space, a final message was sent from Earth to the galaxy. Earth never surrenders. The words echoed across the stars, a warning to any who might think to challenge humanity in the future. Earth had proven that it was not a planet to be conquered, and its people were not a species to be trifled with. The galaxy had learned that lesson the hard way, and it was a lesson they would not soon forget. Even in victory, humanity knew that this was only the beginning. The Vortak might have been defeated, but the galaxy was full of other potential threats. Yet, with their newfound unity and strength, the people of Earth were ready for whatever came next. They had survived the unthinkable and emerged victorious. The message was clear, Earth would stand against any invader, no matter the odds. And now, the galaxy knew it too. 